In this lesson, we'll thoroughly discuss isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic solutions. The question we're answering reads, describe each of the following solutions as isotonic, hypotonic, or hypertonic. Three words that we absolutely need to know the definition of before we can answer this question. Indicate whether a red blood cell placed in each solution will undergo hemolysis, crenation, or no change. The first one we'll look at is a 5% mass per volume glucose solution. Now as I mentioned, it's important that we know the definition for these three words. Isotonic is when water and solute are at equal levels inside and outside the cell. The cell wants to accomplish this state, and when it's at this state, the cell is at equilibrium and expect no change. A hypotonic solution is when the number of solutes outside the cell membrane is less than that found inside the cell. And finally, hypertonic is when the number of solutes outside a cell membrane is more than the number of that found inside. Going back to A, we're told that we're placing, let's say that we have a container, we're placing a red blood cell inside of a solution that contains 5% mass per volume of glucose. In other words, 5 grams per every 100 milliliters. That's the same thing as 5%. So 5 grams of glucose per every 100 milliliters of water. Now normally within a cell, the concentration of glucose is very much the same. It's at 5%. So because the concentration of glucose out here and the concentration of glucose within the cell are the same, Water flow in and out of the cell will be at equilibrium. So this is an isotonic solution and no change will occur to the cell. So here we should expect a balance. So I'll write in isotonic. What if we placed this cell in a 0.2% mass per volume sodium chloride solution? 0.2% and if we use our calculator, 0.2 divided by 100 is one gram of sodium per 500 milliliters of solution. What happens then? Well, Once again, we need to know the percentage of sodium chloride within the cell. Now, under normal conditions, a cell has a concentration of sodium chloride that's around 0.9%. So within the cell, it's 0.9%. You can see that there's an imbalance. We have 0.2 on the outside and 0.9 on the inside. And given that the cell membrane of a cell is semi-permeable only to water, it will try to balance this out, where water from the solution will go into the cell, causing it to burst eventually, because all that water flowing into that cell will make it so big that hemolysis will eventually occur. So we'll assume that hemolysis will occur to the cell. Finally, what will happen to a red blood cell placed in a 10% mass per volume glucose solution? As discussed before, the percentage of glucose in a cell is 5%. So it's a little different than this one. So this time, we have 10%, which represents 10 grams per every 100 milliliters. And given that a cell membrane is permeable only to water, the water within the cell will try to balance the pressures out in such a way where water exits the cell so that the water immediately outside of it has a similar concentration. And this is referred to as crenation, where the water exits the cell, eventually causing the cell to collapse. And there you have it. That is how to distinguish between isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic solutions.